Right, good evening, welcome to the 12th Man Podcast, live on Facebook, on the Red Radio, and on all the lovely usual places you usually see us. Uh, look at these two lovely faces looking at me. Um, you've got me, Steve Jackson, I'm in the main chair. Big one tonight, isn't it? It's a, um, the yeah. show, the show, the show's a big one tonight. Um, yes, should be a good one, this. Um, got Mr Cutler with me, evening Cups. Evening, how are we doing? Good, are you? Yeah, spot on. Good, good. And the two gentlemen looking straight at me. Um, one looks all fed up already. Mr. John Donovan's with us. Evening, John Dam. Take, take yourself off mute, mate. <laughs> What's he doing? He's not ordering more fries, is he? There we go. Yeah, I've just I've just put them in. Yeah, I was just saying, speak to Dicko while I'm sorting this out. <laughs> um, yeah. I had a bit of a I had a bit of a coughing fit before I started, so I didn't I didn't want you to hear that. But uh, yeah, all right, all good. Thank you, about my cough. Good, good. <laughs> and we've got Mr. Steve Dixon with us, who's got a big role tonight. Evening, Dicko. Evening, everybody. Okay, we all good. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, good. So yes, we're live everywhere. You know, get in touch. Um, a lot of people are watching this for a certain reason. Yes, when Dicko <laughs> puts his lovely yellow wig on. And starts his Rod Stewart impressions. Um, yes, about about twenty two quarter two. We said, yeah, we'll, we'll probably uh, get talking about it about seven forty. I think, lads. Uh. Yeah, and then we'll um, we'll hand over to our our main adjudicator there, who will draw the names of the of the uh, the prize draw. And if you've won, well done. If one of us wins, it wasn't fixed. I promise. But me and Cuts have already said if we do win, I think it'll go back in anyway. Yeah. So I yeah, must admit, I, th- I think a lot of the people who were listening, tune in, and watching that, they'll be disappointed that Dicko hasn't gone the old log with the blonde wig. Like. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, Sophie's been sorting all that side of it out, so you'll well, see blonde. later. You'll, you'll see later. It's all there. Uh, it's all expertly done, not by me. Thanks to me, daughter, for sorting it all out. So, if yes. you've if if you're in the, if you've spent more money, got more entries, you'll be in there ten times, twenty times, thirty times, whatever money you've put in, you'll be in the draw as many times as you paid for. So you'll see later on in the show what happens, but it should be good. So on behalf of all of us, then thank you, Sophie, for your hard work behind the scenes. That yeah. was here at present. Keeps her dad right. <laughs> well, someone has to. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was. It's it's been a success. I think it's been really good. But we'll talk about it a little bit later. We will. Um, yeah, yeah. A couple of games to get through first. And, exactly. Uh, and then we'll plod on. Yes, I'll come to. I'll come to John Don first. Um, he's t- he's put his orders in. He's free to go. Birmingham last Tuesday, John. Obviously, um, went into that two in a row. Won two games in a row. Went. Did we, did we go unchanged at Birmingham? We did, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Yeah. So unchanged again, third game in a row. Um, obviously you were there at St Andrews. Um, with the with the magnificent Borough faithful again. Um, a massive, massive three points because it was a quite a tricky night in the end. So say we were under a little bit of pressure in the end. Um, obviously hanging on to that one nil victory, but um, a cracking finish, a cracking goal, um, which Rye absolutely enjoyed. If you haven't watched his videos about it, it's funny as. Um, yeah, it was a cracking victory and. Um, yeah, much deserved three points. Yeah, it it, it was. I mean, it it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a great game. If I'm if I'm totally honest, but it doesn't matter. Um, Scruffy one nil wins uh, are just as important um, on on the points board as uh, as a convincing victory. So um, yeah, it was it was going to be tough. We spoke about it. You know, they're really struggling. Um, obviously, Tony Mowbray is. Uh, Recovering, and um, it's Mark Venus in charge, and, and they've had a, an appalling run while he's been in charge. Um, so it, it was it was going to be tricky. It was going to be tough. Um, and, and to be honest, it wasn't pretty, but it was dogged. We um, 
we, we, we dug in. Uh, we got a, a fairly early goal, a cracking goal, absolutely superb. Well, um, well set up by Luke Allen, who had a, a decent game, um, and finished superbly by um, Riley McGree. Uh, and, and we hung on. Not, not really many scares. I mean, Dieng dropped the ball once, and uh, Rav had to sort of clear clear up after him. Um, but other than that, you know, it was it was fairly comfortable, fairly routine, uh, and and by no means a sparkling performance. But uh, as I said earlier, three points is all that matters, and uh, we brought them home. And the um, the middles of fans who were there were, were absolutely fantastic. There wasn't as many as we normally take there. Uh, now. I, I, I'm obviously aware that you know people are saving up uh, the money for season ticket renewals. Um, also, a lot of fans um, are disappointed that um, on the run previous to the Norwich and and, um, and Birmingham wins, you know, we we weren't playing particularly well, uh, and it's sort of like closed the door on our playoff chances. So that'll affect numbers also. But those that were there. Were, were absolutely fantastic. Great support from start to finish. Um, and, you know, they got the rewards with the win. Not so much the performance, but they got the rewards with the win. It was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. It was, um, like I say, it wasn't wasn't the greatest game of football in the world. It was, you know, as I say, it got, the more it was longer and longer, it was 1-0. It was really tense. Um, you thought, was, get it over the line, boys. Um, I mean, I'll follow on into this from... Saturday's game, but towards the end of that game against Tuesday, we looked a bit leggy, didn't we? Um, we looked a bit. We, was that the start of things to come that we saw on Saturday? I don't know. I think sometimes you get games where you get pulled down a little bit by the opposition, and under Tony, they they actually went on a decent run after mm-hmm. Rooney. Uh, I think the goal the goal was a worldy, but to be fair, any of us could have played in goal that night because I don't think they had a shot on target. The end didn't have nothing to do when. No. And I wasn't really nervous at the end of the game like I, I normally am because I, I never thought they looked like creating. And, and to be fair, we d- we did really well. There were some good defensive performances in there. Like John said, Dale had a really good game. I thought Clark was excellent again, along with Paddy. So, yeah, the three points is all that matters. I don't care how we play it about winning. Yeah. Uh, Dicko, do you concur with the two um, gentlemen's opinions on one? I thought you were going to say experts there. <clears throat> no. No, um, the two gentlemen's opinions there. <laughs> I, I I agree with most of it. Um, just until the very end there, when you said it's, <laughs> it's all about it's all it's all about winning. It doesn't matter how we play. I think yes, when we had a glimmer of hope of the, of the playoffs, um, how how we play it doesn't matter as much. It's about getting the points on the board. And although it's slightly concerning that we're we're huffing and puffing against poor sides like Blackburn and and, and Birmingham. It was at least, at least we've got points on the board. We've pulled ourselves away from the bottom half of the table. We're looking up. Obviously, it's not going to be enough to get out of the playoffs this year. But I would like, I would like to think from now at the end of the season with eight games to go, and I think Carrick alluded to it after the game that he'd like Middlesbrough now just to have a little bit of a go. So I agree with that process. I think the fans now that are tra- travelling and the fans that are coming to the Riverside for the last eight games, let's have a go. Let's play attacking football, you know, spin the wheel and see if we're going to score a few goals. If we win, we win. If we don't, we don't. But let's have a go. I think I've been on here saying we need to play a back five, which we, which we, which we have done, which has pulled away from the from the from the the threat of a relegation fight. It served we're well, but let's be honest, it's not great to watch. Certainly on looking look at what we're playing last season. Even the start of this season, uh, when we got going, it was better to watch. So I think now that we're safe from any nonsense of the bottom six, I would like to think going into the last eight games that we now just go, let's have a pop, let's have a go at these teams, even if it's Leeds, so we come to the Riverside or whoever, let's have a go at them and see what we can do, and you know, see see if the players that are still here at the moment are going to be good enough for next season. See how much they want to be here next season. So I think that's going to be important, and for selling season tickets, like uh, John Don was mentioning before, mm. let's let's uh, let's have a pop to the end of the season for me. Yeah, absolutely. I say, obviously, you know, following Saturday's result, which we'll go into 
I said a couple of minutes. It, that that's how it is now. It's it takes games to, I suppose, draw our lines ready for next season. You know, put a marker down, get some momentum. You know, because we don't want that. What happened? What happened last season? Because we really did die at the end, didn't we? I think the most important thing is is to entice the fans who were unsure whether to read you or not. I I agree with what Dick was saying mm. there. Um, if they can see, if they can see the type of football that we're going to try and play, hopefully with better players, similar to what he said last season. Mm. I think that is a big thing. If 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 you're fifty fifty, I tell you what, I enjoyed four of the last eight games and and a bit of, a bit of positivity bringing that back i think is important yeah absolutely i think that's what's needed as well they say the run we went obviously three wins in a row was great but 2024 as a whole has not been great for us well, we've that, had, that's we've the had, biggest understatement of the year isn't it we've had a bit of a stinker haven't we and you know to give fans a little bit to cheer about a bit to to go out for the rest of the season just to you know, I know we may not have much to play for, but if we can get the fans' interest peaked again, rolling on into next season, I think that's going to help us so much. At the end of the day, you can say we haven't got much to play for. Well, these lads who are playing every week, they've got surely their futures at this football club next season. And all right, we're not the biggest club in the world, but we're still a big football club yep. in a championship. And if they want to play at a decent level, let's be honest, a lot of them are going to have to put in better performances than they have since Christmas. It's not like they're going to take a redu reduction in pay from now until the end of the season. So as fans, personally, I expect 100% of them to be given everything for the football club while they're here. Exactly. The, la know. the lads that are on loan at the moment, I don't think as many of the loan players have covered themselves in glory. So it's up for those players to prove that Middlesbrough are going to offer them a contract next season. And I I'd also like to see before the end of the season, um, one of the two young lads who are you know coming through, given a chance, uh, Sonny Finch, who's come back from injury, who's been playing well and scoring goals under twenty ones, is it? I think. Um, people like that who are on the fringes. There's, there's no harm for me now, until the end of the season, if a few of those appear on the bench and if if, if the game's going in the right way, give give them some minutes and and, and progress them for next season. I think that'll yeah, be a good a good way to go as well. Yeah, I think the talk is. Uh, I think I think Carrick came out today. Oh yes, you know. I think after the game, he said he's going to give Sonny Finch a bit of a chance, a bit of involvement. Now he's back to his um, his full his full fitness. You know, give him a, give him a go on the first thing because he's cracking talent. They say we've got a few um, talents in the under twenty three, so they're worth a go. Um, well, they're going to give one hundred percent, aren't they? And play for the shirt, and also I think what it also does it, it energizes the Middlesbrough support because we we'll love to see a, a young player coming through. Yeah. So. When you're watching the game, it gives a bit more interest uh, to the fans in the stand, looking at what these young lads can potentially do. And to be fair, let's be honest, if you look at Saturday's performance or, or even the Birmingham game, there's a lot of players at the moment that really, they're not exactly pulling up trees. In, in, in Oh, you've got to play him, he's fantastic. Oh, we can't afford to not play him up front or him out wide. These young lads, I'm sure, after they come in, they'll, they'll mm. more than uh, do themselves justice. Absolutely, it's always yeah. They've, they've got they've got to be introduced at the right times. You mentioned it there, Dicko. You know, if it's right in games, I'm sure they'll get yeah. a bit of game time. But they've got to be handled. Um, they've got to be handled right. Um, we've seen so many, um, shall we say, budding stars that um, that have had their spirits broken by um, by being thrown in at the wrong time. Um, and it's 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 you know. It, it's knocked them and, and they've gone back over rather than progressed. So um, the opportunity is there to give some kids um, a, a bit of game time, but do it correctly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Let's absolutely. be honest, most importantly, they've got to be good enough. <laughs> That's the most important yeah. thing. But I'm sure the people behind the scenes will know which ones are ready to, to pop in and out the team between now and the end of the season. Yeah, of course. It's, um, as I say, we've got a track record as well, bring youngsters through that can do. Uh, amazing things and going to ama and going to amazing careers as well. I would say, you know, one really reason obviously Stuart Downing came through our academy, England star. Well, obviously it's a Villa, Liverpool, West Ham. You know, that's that's the kind of thing that we can bring through. You know, so the opportunity is there. They say we've we've got a track record of doing it. They say as recent as Hayden Hackney, look how you know, look how well he's done when he came bursting through. So yeah, we've got a track record, but. I won't go around everyone for a man of the match. I'll just go to the man that was there. Um, so over to you, John Don. Man of the match for Tuesday night. Um, like I said, it, it was 
a fairly standard game. You know, nobody really stood out for me. But I just think um, Paddy McNair coming back into the um, team um, and playing the back three uh, on that night with um, Vandenberg and Clark. Uh, I, I, I just thought Paddy was comfortable. He didn't have um, the most potent threat in Birmingham's attack against him, but he just he just tidied up nicely. He done things um, he just done things smartly. So I, I would say he was my man of the match uh, against Birmingham. Yeah, I know you weren't going to go around, but uh, I think one person for me that I would have given it was Matt Clark. I just thought when they were lumping balls in, he, he won every header. And I said I think I said it last week. He's he's looking better and better the more games he's getting. So. Hopefully that's a plus point for next season as well. Get him fully fit, and he, he's a commanding he's a commanding guy in both both boxes. To be fair, yeah, of course, absolutely. Um, yeah, not much more to add. There you go, Birmingham done. Right, Saturday. Obviously, we were in the fan zone, weren't we? Before kick off, obviously um, promoted our little thing for charity, and um, obviously Gaz read out the team. One change, um, Jones in. Which we all thought brilliant. Then we all realised who was in for. Rav Vandenberg. I was a bit gutted about that. Yeah, thought, he's, oh, he's no. been superb. And he last, well, to be fair, he's probably been superb since Christmas, which has coincided with our worst run. Huh. But um, we've said, we, every, every, everyone knows what a great <laughs> talent he is. And yeah. t- I haven't heard anything about his injury. I presume it was an injury. So yeah, apparently it was has anyone knock, heard yeah. anything? Uh, the, but when Borough tweeted it out, they said it was. Um, he misses out due to a knock. Yeah. Don't know how much of a knock he's got. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's not too long. Yeah, he's got to play a few more games before the end of the season. It's going to stop him going, I think, it's to the uh, national team anyway. Um, so, which is, which is, I suppose, a benefit for us. He can stay with the team for a couple of weeks, you know, stay at Rockcliffe, recuperate, re energise, and go again. But, um, John, Don, what do you make of the team? What's that one change, enforced change that came out of it? Yeah, I was uh, I was quite pleased with the with the team uh, lineup. Um, I was you know I was puzzled at first um, whether or not Jones was playing as wing back um, with with Aylin in, in the middle of uh, or part of the back three. Um, but yeah, I was obviously like you lads. I was a bit gutted that um, Rav was out, but um, overall, I thought the team was quite strong. It was. You say um there's got obviously a couple of options on the bench as well, Dick go. Obviously we spoke before kick off. Um a couple of options there. On paper, that team was more than good enough to go ahead and win that game, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, I agree with everything you have said there. Um I, I thought the team would be good enough to go and win the game and to be honest with you, I know I know Blackburn had, had a few chances as well, but I, I thought Middlesbrough should have won the game. Uh, I thought we started off really, really brightly, actually. I thought we looked like a team that had got a little bit of confidence back. And I thought we passed the ball around really well the first 15 minutes and created a couple of chances, which Mark, Mark was forced. I don't know how he missed, but he, he did at the back post. Um, and I think Marcus Force's injury, uh, which sounds like a hamstring, um, was what was key to what happened in the game because once Mark, Marcus Force left the pitch, Middlesbrough didn't seem to be the same, the same side, didn't seem to have the same energy. And we seem to we're passing and we're moving up in the final third. Seem to be predictable and lethargic, you know. And yeah. Um, from that moment on, you could sense it was going to be a, a, a you know whoever scores the first goals is going to win the game. Um, as it happens, both sides <laughs> weren't, weren't good enough to do it. Funny enough, <laughs> that's how football works. The team that scores the most goals wins the game. <laughs> There you go, so, boys and girls. You've learned something new tonight. The first goal. <laughs> first goal. <laughs> Jake or Jacobus has uh, messaged in on Facebook. Saturday's game summarised our season effectively. Uh, Mal promise followed by moderately average football. On Saturday, it seemed Force's injury totally derailed us. After that, our passing was so haphazard. Let's focus on a decent end of the season. Too many Spot long on. words in there for me. Like. Spot on, Jacob. Spot on. Yeah. And uh, we've, It was... We've got... it... Go on. I was just going to say one more comment. We've gone international. Evening, fellas, tuning in from France. Bonjour, Ryan. Oh, well, there you go. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour, Ryan. <laughs> We've gone international. My, my. <laughs> go on, John, Dan. How are you? Monch too, monch too. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, <laughs> That's what was in my head there, Delboy, yeah. <laughs> oh. I, um, 
Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how Fors missed that chance because obviously the um, previous week he'd scored a much, much more difficult uh, chance with his head at the tight angle uh, at QPR. So yeah, it was a, it was a strange miss, um, and I think if we score that, we. we Going to win comfortably, to be honest. But Force's injury, like you, lads have said, and like Jacob uh, said in his comments, it just um, it it we lost all shape, uh, and the sloppiness was was disgraceful from both sides. As, uh, b- both teams, professional footballers, the amount of stray passes and poor control, you know, it it just it just it, it felt like a, a nothing game because um, it felt like a, a not not so much a friendly, but. It, there was no cut and thrust, if you know what I mean. It, it just sort of, it just went on. It just like it, you, you just saw the minutes counting down without any major, major activity until obviously uh, the 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 incident right at the death uh, at um, at the North Stand end. Um, but yeah, it's a game we should have won with the personnel we had out, um, and uh, Dieng had two or three what I would call routine saves to make. He made them look fairly spectacular, but they were fairly routine. Um, and there was there was nothing from um, from Blackburn really. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it, we would have we would have been talking about the, the, the match in 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 a much better way if we'd have just nicked that one nil with Force's chance, and we'd have been kept. Uh, it would have kept us sorry five five points behind the uh, the sixth place team. As it is, we got one point, and we find our chance of playoffs became even slimmer. Uh, yeah, the game just petered away really until the final flourish at the end. It's disappointing. It was. It was really disappointing. And I say, well, you stole you stole my question. Really, you made a really good point with it. It did feel like a a nothing affair. It felt like two mid-table teams that were basically just waiting for the the final curtain to be brought down on the season. It was a bit of a, a bit of a sad affair, really. I say Blackburn didn't bring a great deal. Our fans, I thought, weren't at their loudest, I've got to say. And I say we could be everything and it was a sour stand game, everything, but it just felt like there was nothing in between kind of thing. I thought it was a bit quiet. It goes, it goes hand in hand though, doesn't it? It's like you yeah, know, if, if 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 the team on the pitch is entertaining and creating chances of it ignites oh, yeah. the fans in the stands, and there was very little to get excited about on Saturday. Yeah. Um, and like like John said, it just felt flat. And at the end of the game, when you when you you know it was an opportunity with a couple of teams around, we're not playing because they won the cup and, and things. And it just felt like another like it's been all season. It's been another missed opportunity. It's not quite good enough. It's two steps forward and three steps back. It's. It's been like that all season, and you just got to be honest. This season, for whatever reason, you can throw injuries into it. You can talk about signings. You can talk about not making signings in January. Whichever way you want to polish it up, it's just not been good enough this season. Simple as that. We're not good enough for the season. We're not good enough for the playoffs. And you know that's not to say that the future is not bright. We've got good players. We're, we're probably four really good signings away from having a real good pop at it next season. Um, but at the moment, that feels a long, long way away. Um, and to be honest, I just like I said, I hope we'll we'll have a go for the rest of the season against whoever we're playing. We'll mix it up a bit. We'll give a few youngsters a chance and just try to create a little bit of excitement for the fans that turn up home and away. And then we'll re-energize in the summer and see what happens. Yeah, I mean that that wasn't me saying you know criticizing the fans in any way. I say I fully agree with what you're saying. Obviously, you know, it's part and parcel of what you see in front of you. If you're not even excited by what you see, you're not going to get yourself excited in the stands, are you? Although I did find out that the West Stand could hear us, so, you know, it was always good to hear that. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was there. Uh, thank you. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a great Saturday afternoon at the football, entertainment-wise. I think, a bit, mm. I think in their position, They'll have been happy with the point away oh, from home as well. Yeah. So so I don't criticise them for that. That's down to us to break teams down when they're going mm-hmm. to come in and happy for a point. And we just weren't good enough. It's as simple as that. Yeah. I think, I they, mean, I think they drew five out the last six, hadn't they, before they played us and then got another yeah. draw. They've, they've come for a draw and they got what they wanted. Um, I, I thought it was a strange decision to take uh, Latte Lat off. 
late on. I, mm-hmm. I thought that was a, I don't know if it, if it's minutes and they're, they're, they're trying to get him back to full fitness and be careful with him. But I thought that was a strange decision when we're desperate to try and nick a win. You take your marksman off who scored a mm-hmm. couple of goals lately. He's looking up the speed and yeah. I, I, I I quite you know Sammy Silvera has got potential, but let's be honest, he's not a centre forward. You know, he's a creative player, he's a wide player, he can play in a 10. But I thought it was a strange decision and it, it just took away a focal point up front for the last the last few moments of the game. And you look back on, on the last minute chance with uh, Isaiah Jones, great bit of skill past the two players, chips, Ainsley Pears, comes back out to Sammy Silvira. If that falls to, to Latte do you think that's going to go in the back of the net? I would think it's got more it possi- possibility. Steve, that falls to me or you. We make contact, don't we? Let's be honest. Um, it, it was it was a, a terrible air shot. Um, I don't know whether he took his eye off the ball or, or, or for what reason, but to to, to not connect it in any way. Uh, it was it was it was shocking. Yeah, I mean, I I turned round to look at the few lads behind me, and everybody was exactly the same, <laughs> mouth open. It was like it was like so the looking at Edward Munch, uh, the scream, you know, hands on the hands on the faces, mouth open. Um, it was, yeah, everybody was at, how on earth did he not either make contact with her or, or put it away? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, there were the two, um, sort of, shall we say, glaring chances, glaring misses that we made in the game. That was forced in the first half and Silvera in the second. But, um, yeah, other than that, it was a pretty drab affair. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, when you turn around to say well, what what has just happened, I just collapsed in my back of my chair, and I was thinking, I can't believe I've just seen what I've just seen. It was it was re- it was really bad. If you haven't seen the miss, I don't encourage you to go and see it. I plead to go and see it because it was really. I, I, I still struggle now to think how's he missed the ball. It was it was planned to go on his left foot. Get your body behind it, pin it. I'm no footballer, right? I'm, I'm well, look at me, I'm nowhere near a footballer. But come on, like you used to, have said, you know, get your foot, you can get your football on the end of that, and it's in. They say a pair of yeah, pairs I, on the floor. I, I don't think there was anybody um, encroaching on him or, or, or putting him off, or no. you know, that, that I don't think there was anything that um, that, that would have distracted him. Um, I think he had time to bring it just... down. He, he could have even brought it down and had a shot. I think he had time just to control it and shoot. He didn't actually have to do the air shot for me. He probably could have cushioned it and then hit it. But um, he's had a few of those this season, Sylvia, ran right, right in front of the North Stand. Funny enough, he's had three or four yeah. like that this season. Yeah. It's obviously something within his game that needs to be worked on. He seems to be a player when he's not thinking about it and, and driving towards goal. He's, he's capable of the spectacular. But when he's got to, got to think about it, whether it's a one-on-one or just a little bit composure, he tends to lash at things. You know, I, I, I hear Bernie Slavin talking over the years about, you know, being a proper striker. And you know that sometimes you don't have to take, it hasn't always got to be a powerful shot to beat the goalkeeper. Sometimes the best thing to do is just be calm, a little bit of composure and pick your spot. A little bit like what Marcus Rashford did yesterday. And it, it hits the back of the net. But Silvira seems to have this, at the moment in his game, that when he gets in those positions, he's very rash and just tries to, you know, they've ended up in the back of the stand. They've hit the corner flag, and on Saturday he missed it completely. Well, I, I just, resident. I just think he tries. I, I think he tries to. Yeah, sorry, John. I think he tries to um, uh, make it spectacular. Yeah, I've, I've seen him line up shots, and rather than sort of put, wrap his foot around the ball and 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 sort of caress the ball in or or stroke it in, he just tries to hammer it in as 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 hard as possible to, to try and make it as spectacular as possible. I think, yeah, he needs a bit of coaching on, on you know, the, there are times to sort of like just take a second and, and, and you know, compose yourself and put it away. Um, maybe maybe uh, Slav can put his boots on and, and give him a bit of, uh, give him a bit of training one-to-one. <laughs> yeah, well, our resident bus driver, Jason, says if that chance goes in, it's a totally different podcast. None of the we aren't good enough talk. I think it's I a little disagree. bit unfair. I think it's a little bit unfair <laughs> that though. You've got to, you, we talk about what we see and and yeah, it'd been a bit more positive because we'd have won four in a row. We'd have still been within touching touching distance, maybe of the playoffs. It would have been a little bit more positive. But is it papering over the cracks, Jason? 
we're just saying what we're just saying what we see. Exactly. There's a, re- there's a reason where we are. You know, you are what you are. You are where you are for a reason. Like I've said, I've said on here, I've probably been a little bit more negative than than than, you, than the rest of you. I've I've more or less said all season it's going to be tough. A little bit. Probably... <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's fair. It's like I've I've always thought it's going to be a tough ask for Middlesbrough to make the playoffs this season. For I'm not going to go back through all the reasons, but the reasons I've given over the podcasts. And it was it was a, a glaring omission in January when we didn't say you know sign a striker and Matt Crooks left and um, we sold Rogers to Aston Villa, it, it, you know, and then you add a few injuries to that. It, it's clear to see what we're not strong enough squad wise and we're not quite good enough personnel wise what we've got to to be at the top six. And let's be honest, even if we won on Saturday and chipped away and chipped away and sneaked into the playoffs. I don't think many Middlesbrough fans, if they're being brutally honest, would fancy with chances in the playoffs against the teams that are probably going to be there. Um, as I say, I'm quite happy to end the season with a relatively positive end, with some good results, and then really have a go next season. And let's see what Steve Gibson's ambition is in the summer. We must have funds to spend because we didn't spend in January. We've sold players. We haven't spent a lot in the summer. And we've, we've done well, uh, you know, selling season ticket-wise, cup runs, semi-final of the cup. There's going to be funds there to spend. And I, I think Middlesbrough might have a little bit of a go in, 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 in the summer. And if you look at the teams coming down, it's probably going to be a better season for Middlesbrough to progress next season. If you look at the teams that potentially could come down compared to having your, your Leicesters and your Leeds and your Southamptons, it's always going to be a, a really difficult season this season. So... <laughs> I, I'm sitting here now on one hand saying the Jason, you know, we're not good enough, doom and gloom. But on the other hand, looking to what could potentially happen in the summer, I'm quite excited about it. Yeah, well, a couple, couple of comments on the miss. Uh, Sharon Howells, don't worry, she hasn't used any swear words. That's a first. Not yet, not yet. That shot was an under 13 <laughs> strikers miss. Oh. Tom Marin put, hadn't seen that miss until now. I regret going to watch it. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> um, and to, Jason, there's a four, there's a there's another microphone here. You're more than happy to come back on. You know, you know, come and have a chat with us. Give us the positivity that you um, that you say. Come and bring it on. No I'm, well, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up Jason a little bit because if, if we had a one um, on Saturday, it, it, a bit like Birmingham, um, if we got got a scrappy one nil yeah. win, it would have been a lot more positive on here. Um, I'm not saying it means that um, we were we would make the playoffs. I've said before our chances are slimmer than slim. Um, but you know what? I, I'm a Borough fan, like you lads. And if if we were to scrape, if if we if we had one Saturday and we were to scrape in the playoffs, I'd have took it with both hands. Are we good enough to go up? Probably not. No. If we if we'd have got to the playoff, we'd have got the final. If we managed to win, would we have um, been cannon fodder in the Premier League? Yeah, absolutely, of course we would. But do you know what? I'd take it. I'd, I'd I'd take the riches that one season in the Premier League mm-hmm. would give us, and use that money to try and uh, help us really build a, a strong team to come back for the next two or three seasons. Um, I've heard fans saying, "Oh." I don't want us to go up because we we get hammered. We probably would, yeah. I I accept that, but you can't turn down the amount of money that the Premier League gives you, um, just because you don't you say you don't want to see your team um, um fail badly in the Premier League. You've just got to take that take the money. If somebody was to walk up to you and say, you know, there's hundred and twenty million, whatever it is, um write the season off, but you've got that money to build for the next two or three seasons. I'd take that personally. No, you have to, don't you? I mean, to back that up as well, I bet if you go and ask any Burnley and Sheffield United fan, um, you know, you're getting, you're getting wallet most weeks, but you're still enjoying being in the back on the big time. Do you really think they're going to come to you and say no? Of course they are. I don't think, I, well, I don't it, think there's too no, many uh, Sheffield United fans yeah. enjoying it, mind I have to say. No, I I, have, like, to I, back I, it up, <laughs> there's a video online, young lass, she said her team gets battered every week, she, you know, team gets she's the rock bottom of the league, the most likely going to go down, but she's loving every moment of it. She's back in the team every week, and she absolutely loves going to see Sheffield United Bramall Lane. Well, I That's think as Jimmy as Jimmy Neil used to say, she's lying. 
So I, I honestly, I mean, Jimmy Neal <laughs> wasn't sober half the time. That's why. <laughs> if you're getting five, six, sevens, and eights, five, six, sevens, and eights at home, and the ground's yeah. empty, she, I, I, I'm sorry, like no, you can't yeah, be enjoying I, that I, football. You've got I to be agree. competitive. You've, you've got to be competitive. But then, I mean, but if then... you, I would say if a Luton fan was seeing it, I would say fair enough. They're still in the, in the chance of staying up. They've had some good games this season, oh, well, you know. And, and it, you know, I, I can understand the Luton fans coming coming out with that, but. What Chef United are doing this season, I wouldn't be enjoying any of that. Well, if you go, if you go back to it, go, go, obviously go back to the other team and Burnley. Burnley won on Saturday. Yeah, well, Burnley there's, there's still a chance Burnley can stay up, isn't it? Especially after Forrest got deducted points today, and there's yeah. still a little thing hanging over Everton. But I agree. Just think about, but uh, think about Forrest coming down as well. I agree with Dick. Oh, there will be, there'll be certain fans that are enjoying it, but I would imagine the bulk of the man enjoying it. But if that was me. I'd st- like John said, I would still take that because it sets the club up for the next five, ten years of having yeah. a go again in a championship. So where it, where is Middlesbrough? Where is Middlesbrough going to get that amount of money from yeah. if it's not from the Premier League? Rav, you, know, Rav Vandenberg. When, you can't you can't just think about well, what's going to happen on the pitch. You've got <laughs> you've got to think about what's the future of the club and mm-hmm. how we're going to progress. So one year, even if we got battered next year. In the Premier League, obviously it's not going to be next year, but I would take one year of getting battered mm-hmm. for the club to be in a stronger position over the next five, six, seven yeah, years yeah. when we're all still going to be following and the listeners are going to be following. You've got to think out of the box sometimes. So, I mean, before I ask you man of the matches and we go to what everybody's tuned in for, I just want to have a talk, quick two minutes about Isaiah Jones. I said this to John Don on Saturday. And he said exactly the same thing to me. I said it to you outside before we came in here. He looked a yard off it Saturday. He looked not to what we... I know he's coming back from injury. I fully get that. But he just didn't look at it. You know, did he look a yard off it? Or was it just me watching it from the wrong perspective? He possibly did look a yard off it, but so did going forward, the whole team, the whole team looked off but it. But even so... his pace wasn't there. He, yeah, maybe he's maybe he's not hundred percent fit, and in the back of his mind he's thinking about another another injury or or whatever. But uh, he's been a massive miss for us. So oh, huge! I'm not I'm not gonna. I know you're not, but I'm not gonna sit here and criticize Isaiah oh, Jones no, no. for Saturday. But he's just he's just because because obviously it showed what he's capable of, and then that, that last minute oh, yeah. when he got it, yeah. he got it his yeah. full back. He got at him, took on a couple of players, and hit the crossbar. He wasn't at his best. That, that's yeah. a fact. Oh, that's what we were saying, were yeah. we, John? You know, he didn't look quite yeah. what we expect him to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he just l- lacked a bit of um, sharpness, a bit of. Uh, um, he looked, he looked leggy. Um, even though it was, I mean, it was his first game back, um, so that might be the reason why. But it was good to have him back, and now you know we've got uh, no game for two weeks, so he can build up his fitness on the training ground and um, hopefully. Against Southampton, he'll he'll have his sharpness back, but yeah, I I, I agree with Cuts. There was a, there was a lot of players, just I don't know, the zip was missing, wasn't it? The 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 the, the, mm. the thrust of the game was was a little bit lacking. Um, not just Isaiah Jones, but um, but yeah, yeah, it, it, like I say, we missed two guilted chances, and yeah. um, we got a point. But listen, I'm looking at it, uh, twelve points. Um, we picked up ten, four games, three clean sheets, one goal conceded. Well, I'm okay it. with that. Yeah, we have all absolutely. Of but it's, I, I, I mean, I did say you know, about thirty-five minutes in, I thought we looked really leggy. I just thought that the four games in so many days had probably caught it was caught us now, and we probably because a lot of people said, "Is it coming at the wrong time?" You know, obviously a bit of burst in form, the national break, but I think it's coming at the right time. Give him a couple of weeks to put the feet up and just let them. Um, Guess stuck into it. He's put his glasses on now, so I'm going to come straight to him first. Um, do you want to read any stats out, out before I ask you your man of the match? No, no I, stats. I'd like. No. Go on, John. I'd like can. to. Uh, Go on, John. Yeah, the, we've we've played the bottom eight teams twice, bar and Sheffield Wednesday. So 45 points that we could have picked up. Uh, we picked up 17 out of the, off the bottom that's eight teams. Enough. I think I think that's uh, that's a pretty bad stat. 17 points. From a possible forty-five, um, it, it, it it's not good enough to be fair. And um, you know, you, you look at some of the games. You know, Blackburn at home drew, Plymouth at home lost, Stoke um, 
at home lost. Uh, oh. QPR at home lost. Birmingham we won. Huddersfield uh, we won. Um, uh, sorry, we drew at home, didn't we? But uh, yeah. you know, Sheffield Wednesday still to play, and Rotherham we lost. It's um, not good enough, you know, that the points tally from mm. the bottom current bottom eight teams. It's just not good enough. And, and if people are wondering why we aren't going up this year, clip them last thirty seconds. That's the reason why we're not going anywhere this year. Not because of well, if, how, we, if, how we can stump up against the top teams. It's, it's it's the bread and butter of the bottom teams. If you look at all the top teams, they beat the bottom teams, and that's where they, you know they build on that and give themselves a platform. We haven't done that this year. I like yeah, to say just... forty five points. Forty five points. If we'd have got half of those, twenty two, we'd have got half of those, we would have been now two points behind the sixth place team, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and to be honest, we, we should have got more than half the points off the bottom eight. But anyway, that's just it's all it's just that yeah. little stats, isn't it? Just, just, As just we said on yeah, many times, John, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> Jason, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Jason, the right to reply, he's, yeah, yeah. he's written back in, you sneak into the playoffs, even by one point, it's a lot of you from that point. We beat Chelsea, uh, got the double over Leicester, then we get beat by Rotherham and Stoke. Anything can happen, it's not over till it's mathematically impossible. Uh, Sharon Howells replied about the 17 points, there's an expletive in there, uh, and a little bit extra that I can't read, but yeah, Sharon. We get it, it's bad. <laughs> we get it, it's bad. Um it, Jason's right. If we do sneak in the playoffs, you know, it, anything can happen in the playoffs. That's what. That's why we all love watching it. Even if the teams aren't in it, we all love watching it. But so to be the prophet of doom, that ain't happening. Let me finish. I know. Yeah, we know that. Okay, yeah, we, we, know <laughs> but, we, we know. <laughs> we know it's not happening. But you know, we we just we, we're just carrying on the conversation from earlier. I mean, you say it's not happening. If, if, we, get, if we if we get ten points out of the next four games. <laughs> this pod, they, no, if we do, we've just got 10 points out of 12 there and we were on a really, really bad run. Worst run we've been on all season. If we get 10 points out the next 12, I'm not saying we'll do it, but if we do, this podcast will be completely different. If we get 10 points from our next six, absolutely, absolutely. Don't, don't get us wrong. Yeah, Every absolutely. single one of us wants us to do it. We're just trying yeah. to be... We're just saying it how we see it. Really. We're, just, we're just putting a perspective yeah. on it now. Obviously, for me, yeah. after <laughs> international break, it's a very tough running now. It's a very, very tough running. Say, the game is the, the games is, are running out yeah. as well. You know, we're, yeah. we're playing catch up with too many teams, so already yeah. got the advantage in the points, and the yeah. games are running out. That's 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 the, the problem is, we've got now. It's not impossible, but it's unlikely, and we know yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. exactly, impossible, well, not impossible, but improbable. Simple as that. Um, so, right, man of the matches from the the, the three gentlemen. You go first. Cliff. Well, I don't think I've given Paddy man the match in the last few weeks, and I think he's been really good been since really he's good, come back. He? So yeah. I am going to give it a Paddy. Well done. Um, I know you give it to Paddy on Tuesday, John Don, but who was your man of the match Saturday? Paddy McNair. I just thought he was... Uh, it, it, uh, he didn't put a foot wrong for me. I thought he was... Um, yeah. He, he, he's, he's come in, you know, and he, 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 he goes through games um, generally unnoticed, but... Um, but his contribution's massive. I thought he played really well along with uh, Clark on uh, on Saturday. But Paddy for me. Yeah, to go. Um, I'll go. It was a real insipid performance, so I, I, I'm going to go goalkeepers union. I know John said it was three routine saves, but you've still got to make them. So I'll go Senny Dieng. I'm going to go Paddy. I thought Paddy was good. Solid. Um, solid as a rock. Easy. He's nice. a good pro, isn't he? I mean, I, I know. I think he said last week that he's calm about his contract situation. Personally, I don't think we'll re-sign him. Do I want us to? Yes, I do. One hundred percent. If we can get him on terms that are suitable for this club of where we are now, yeah. I think he's a decent enough championship player. And he, he's certainly someone who I'd like to keep, keep at the club. But, Absolutely. Well, that, that's the stumbling block, John. Is, is wages? Yeah. yeah, because um, we're trying to bring our wage bill down, and um, Paddy's previous contract was. His wages were high, uh, but he's at the right age. Uh, he's, he's got a great amount of experience. And like you say, generally, he doesn't let us down. He's he's dependable. Um, so I'd like to see him stay, but it's whether or not uh, agreement can be reached. He's one of the um, he's one of the last ones of the the contracts where we give out extortionate amounts per week, isn't he? Unfortunately, Paddy, he's one of them last ones that we've got here. But I'd love him to stay. But we'll go into further on that 
say next week we'll have a good we'll have a good chat about who's players you know which players futures are up for grabs who's playing for, who's playing for a new contract who's playing you know to, to simply just stay here um but I've rumbled on too much. Yeah, we need to crack on. Rod, yeah. St- Rod Stewart's down in all these lag, is he? Yeah. He's getting impatient. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, this is the moment everyone's been waiting for. Um, obviously, first thing I want to say, do you want to say it? No, no, you go on. I just want to say absolute massive, massive thank you to anybody that's donated, anybody that's contributed. To raise over £1,000 is quite humbling. And when we were stood on that stage on Saturday, but with like one last little plug, I felt quite humbled and I felt quite... Quite emotional about it because it's huge for this area. They say yeah. it's it's massive that amount of money, isn't it? Yeah, it was a big thing. Uh, obviously, it was Dick O's brain idea, one of the few ones, he, good ones he has. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but in all seriousness, the football club retweeted it. Gary Phillipson, Dom Shaw, Craig Johns. If I forgot anyone, I apologise. But all the fans as well that retweeted it and have, have joined absolute... in, absolutely fantastic. It's not yeah. just us lads. You have been vital in exactly. what Dick O's about. And before I go to Dick O, I just want to come to John, Don, because he, he can say exactly what over a thousand pounds would mean to the food bank. You collect from on regular occasions. What would that money mean to such a great charity? But it's uh, it, it's massive. Um, that they'll be able to uh, to buy so much, um, uh, so much goods, um, groceries. Uh, Sanitary products, hygiene products, you know, for the people who need it the most. Uh, and they have uh, they have deals um, that that they've brokered with um, with suppliers. And it, what was it, one thousand one hundred and thirteen pound, the final total. Yeah, maybe that I will go a hell of a lot. That will go a hell of a long way to help um, a lot of people. So well done, everybody, and well absolutely. done, Dicko. Your yeah. bra- your brain child, your brain child. Yeah, absolutely, Dick. I say, you know. You, you you keep saying, you know, it's all of us that have put a collective effort in. All we've done is share it. Yeah. You came up with the idea. You put the page together. You did all the work. It's all on you, this one, mate. So, Just before we do the draw, Sharon Howells has said... No, you're not, we're not bringing it so you win it. No, no, she said <laughs> if she wins, she'll sell it to the highest the highest bidder can have it. I'll give you 20 no, quid, right? I don't know if she Sharon means Martin. the highest bidder can have it and it's going to charity or in her back pocket. No, she didn't say <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, I'll give you a hint. She supports Leeds United. That's all I'm saying. Um, right, here we go. Dick, go. It's all okay. This so is all new now. It's it's going to be a bit of a wheel of fortune. Um, everybody's, as I say, entries are in. The more money you've spent, the more times you've been entered into the draw. So, you know, you are in there. You know, if, you, if you've only bought one entry, you'll only be in once. If you bought 30 quid, you'll be in however many times you've, you've entered the draw. But it's a bit of a wheel of fortune. And I'm going to try and get it so you can see it live on the screen if I can. With a bit of help from my daughter. So <laughs> we've got the wheel of the, the well, wheel of football yeah. fortune, like you see. And everybody's entries are in this football, right? Handle this screen a little bit more forward, mate, and we'll, we can get it. No, Boom, e- there no, we go. No expense yeah. spared for the twelve man podcast. Look at that. <laughs> there you go, right? So I'm gonna I'll I'll spin the, the football and then the winner should pop out on the screen for you to see, okay? There you go. Right. Here we so go. I think, I've just got, I, think I've just, I think I've just got to press this, I think, as far as I know. Well, I can't wait if you go it, Bob. Here we go. Good I was look. I was dying to say that the screen's gone off, but I better not. Here we go. Here we go. It's tense. It's very tense, isn't it? It's, a, it's quite as we've ever been. Can you see that? Popped up. No, we can't see it. You'll yes, well, it. we can't. You'll have to read it out. It's... Lewis Morris. Lewis Morris. There you go. Lewis, Lewis Morris. Lewis Morris has won well the shirt. Well done. You've won, you've won a signed shirt. I'm very jealous. Well done. Um, In the second draw for the signed Carlin Cup programme. Sophie's about to do the second one. Here we go. Sophie can't hear us, but well done, Sophie. Yeah, <laughs> Very tense, isn't it? It's great, this. <laughs> can, we, can we have a fake cup draw like this? Louise Donaldson. There we Louise go. Donaldson. Oh, Somebody Louise. Would know well done, Louise. Louise. We know Louise, Louise off X. Good. She's always on X, isn't she? So well yes, done, Louise. Is, indeed. You've won the signed programme. So well done. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Nice and easy. Yeah, so, Diego, how, how are we going to get uh, How are we going to get it, the, the prizes to the winners? 
we'll, we've got the we've got the winners' email addresses. Um, so we'll be emailing the winners. Brilliant. And we we we'll, we'll be contacting them. Don't worry. We've got the, we've got the information. We'll be contacting with them, and I will be sent. Obviously, get the addresses, and we'll be Perfect. sending them off. As soon gonna, as possible to the winners. I was just going to say, even if it'd oh. be easy, even if it'd be easier for people if they want to meet up in the fan zone before the Sheffield yeah. Wednesday game, we could hand it over then as well. Oh, exactly. that's, yeah, that's, that's fine about... if, they'd, if they'd rather collect them personally. That's fine as well. Yeah, hey, that would be good. We'd get a photo opportunity then if they if they're, yeah. if they're up for that, and then uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll show that it's been all legit. So well done, Sophie. Well done, well, Dicko. Ali, John, well John, done John, the two winners. As well. <laughs> I'm sure the two winners can't wait to get the photo took with us a lot anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll be the better looking one out of the lot of us. So there you go. Lewis yeah, Morris yeah. has just won that. Got the shirt. Um, He's won the shirt. Well done, yeah. Lewis. The signed the shirt. shirt. It's signed by one of my heroes, Gareth Southgate. Absolutely. People go, well, he's not very good England manager. Well, I don't care, right? So shut up. Every um, play, Louis, every play. <clears throat> Louise every Donaldson's got the program. program. I can't get it in there. There's there you are. go. That's what Louise has won, signed by all the all the players. So well done, there Louise. You go. Well and done. And a big thank you to your daughter, daughter as well, Dick. Oh, yeah, she's done a lot of work behind the scenes. She's so a, well she's done, a little Sophie. star. She has. It's, it's it's quite complicated to do to get everything right legally and things like that. It takes a lot of work behind the scenes, and she's she's done brilliant for her. So just for an update, Dick. Oh, uh, I don't think we've announced the full total yet. We said we alluded that we got over a thousand pounds. So if you'd like to give the exact amount that we and what we're going to be doing with it. Yeah, one thousand one hundred and thirteen pounds, and the, the whole of the whole of that money will be going, borrowing a slight little, a slight little, uh, little bit of money that gets taken off for the transaction of five or six quid. All of that money will be going. I'll, to I'll the tell food you. Bank. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Right, and I say none of you lads know I was going to say this. That transaction fee, I don't care how much it is. You tell me how much it is, I'll pay for it, and then we can give the whole lot to it. There you go. No problem. No right. problem. Spot on. So. Spot on. so, Spot on. so uh, and and Dicko, I'll try and get uh, I'll try and get somebody from the food bank um, if we're going to meet up with the winners uh, and yourself. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll try and get somebody from the food bank um, to meet us um, at the ship of the Wednesday game on. Uh, is it? It's on the yeah. Monday, isn't it? Is, uh, even if, even if, even if it's you know, on the Monday, the ship of Wednesday be game or the Swansea game because we've got two games that week. Yeah. You know, whichever one it is. Um, yeah, we'll get something involved. We'll get something sorted out. But, but once again, once again, thank you to everyone who went. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. But yeah, just, but yeah, just let us know how much that transaction figure is, mate. And I say I'll, I'll cover that. So the whole lot goes to the food bank. I say they uh, deserve every single penny of that. I think when I was reading, it was two thousand seven hundred pound when it did go. You should sing our money back as you really do. Um, but yeah, you've said it now. Well, There's no going back. <laughs> no, I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. As long as that charity gets the full whack, that's all I care about. So, a fair play. Um, yeah, but let's, let's make sure they get the whole lot. But um, there you go. People are going to switch off now, aren't they? Because they've seen that little bit. In the <laughs> well, I haven't oh, done that now. Absolutely not. But yeah, massive well done to, to Lewis and massive well done to Lou as well. Yeah, top prizes. Top, top prizes. Um, Brilliant. I will say, obviously, it's a little. Obviously, sneaker for things to come. We'll we'll have more things to come at the end of this season or beginning of the next season as well. So keep tuned, keep keep supporting us and stuff, and we'll uh, we'll bring you the good stuff. And that's not just us talking absolute drivel. Um, but um, yeah, so I'll give you a bit of um, clue about next week. Um, so next, obviously, international break coming up, so there's no game for us to preview this week. No, no charity bets. But I might as well come to you and update us on our charity bets because. Um, yeah, I think we've got about four four hundred and sixty seven pound or something like yeah. that, that that we've managed to luckily scoop between us. Mm-hmm. That, like I said, I've said before, we're gonna we're gonna sit down at some point and we're gonna yeah. we're gonna discuss which charity or charities we are going to give it to. Absolutely. I think they'll all be local charities that'll be benefiting from it. So yeah. if we get if well, we're on four sixty seven now. I'm sure between us, we'll if we don't win another bet, we'll round it up to five hundred quid. And if we pick five charities, that's a hundred pound each. So. So there will be uh, some charities benef- benefiting from that as well, which we're only too happy to do. Exactly, we'll we will get to, we'll we'll put our heads together, which will com- which will combine the brain capacity of one brain, um, to look at where we can put this money and who will benefit from what we've done this season, putting our own money into uh, to win some money, which we've done. You know, we've more than covered what we put in there. So yeah, we've done we've all done right. We've right, done, right, right, yeah. done really good. So yeah, um, next week we're going to talk players' futures. So I'll give you a bit of a hint about what we're going to do next week. Also, we'll preview the Easter schedule. 
because in two weeks there won't be a podcast on the Monday, we'll have to do it on the Tuesday, because Easter's spoiled it, and we've got to play Sheffield Wednesday on the Monday, so we'll be back on the Tuesday that week. Um, so we'll preview Easter, Easter schedule next week. Yep. Because I always see that, because even though we're not massively in a race ourselves, both games have influence on either side of that table. Obviously, Southampton are chasing the dream of going back to the Premier League. Sheffield Wednesday are chasing survival. And they really do need it. That might be a lovely game, actually, Sheffield Wednesday, because they're mm-hmm. fighting for the lives. I'd yeah. imagine they'll sell out on, uh, on, oh, on Easter Monday. Oh, they'll bring three, three and a half thousand. They're always... Yeah. They're always yeah. I don't want to upset any Blades fans that might be listening, but for me, Sheffield Wednesday are by far the biggest club in yeah. Sheffield. They're well-supported away from home. They always bring decent numbers. So, yeah, I think that'll be that'll be a bump of crowd, that. It will be. It'll be a, it'll be a big game. I say we'll preview that next week. And as I say, players' futures, players' contracts that are up for renewal... Players that are here on loan that may want to stay. Um, players that haven't performed at all this season that need to show their worth. I hope we've got a longer show because Dick Ols. going to say that one, you son. I was going to say I'd be <laughs> four hour show. Sure. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, to put, put, it, put it in perspective, the Gazette put it, it was an article, was it today? There's 18 players potentially that are playing for their futures in the next eight games. For me, every player's playing for the future. So, every single one of them. I fully get that. But I say, if you want to put some proper numbers on it, there's there's potentially 18 players that need to be looked at. So get your thoughts in, get your get your, get, get your comments in, get your yeah, get everything to all to us, and we'll uh, we'll discuss it because it's us for we here next week. Um, we might have a guest on next week. We'll let you know. But um, yeah, nice and early. We'll uh, we'll call it there. I've got nothing else to put. Do you want to put anything else to the, to the lovely people at side? No, I'm all done. No. Lovely. Right, gentlemen <laughs> online. Uh, John Don, thank you very much for popping on. Diggo, well done. No problem. Um, Spot on. Massively, thank you. massive well done for everything you've done. Well done to everybody again who's donated as well. Just another thank you from me. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, exactly. They say get in touch with... Get, Diggo will be in touch with you, obviously, through there, and obviously get in touch with us if you want to, to see how you can claim your prize. If I can just say one little funny thing that happened when we were at the fan zone on Saturday, when Diggo got up and started talking about it, he informed the crowd that he used to be a Middlesbrough football oh, God, club yeah, player. <laughs> <laughs> School well, time for this football club. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great to be fair, he did really well. Yeah, it was... <laughs> I forgot about that bit. <laughs> But, um, yeah, we'll laugh about that more next week. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk about, obviously, all the subjects. Up. But, um, yeah, thank you for popping in, as usual. No, it was a pleasure. Always fun with you, lads. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, get your, get your predictions in for the Easter schedule. Get your comments in about the players that have got futures to fight for. Um, and yeah, play, Players that you want to see stay, players that you want to see go. Just be honest. I mean, don't be as harsh as want to see go. Players that you, you won't be too upset if they did go. It's no wrong with saying you want to see them go. Say what you that's want. Like, that's like saying get out. I'm, if, if you don't <laughs> want me, you don't want oh, me. Lads, we, we can have this conversation next week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to promote it properly. Is, you, is get your tea out. on like John? <laughs> He's got five. He's got five cars at his drive-through window waiting to uh, to to get an order in. So um, we'll uh, we'll let him go. And um, yeah, thank you very much for liking, subscribing, listening, commenting, and keeping us going. So. It's been great this season, you know, we've got one part of the season to go, we'll, we'll make it as, as fun and as enjoyable as possible, so yeah, Arriva Derchi, up the borough, I'll talk to you next week. See you next week. Up the borough. Cheers lads. Thank up you for borough. listening to the 12th Man Podcast, hope to see you all again next week. Up the borough. <laughs>